One of the questions most commonly asked when you're doing meshes, especially static meshes, is how do you create a physics shape? How do you, how do you make sure that you can walk into a building, walk up stairs, and look through windows, etc.? So we've got a building here that somebody made, and it's got walls, and it's got floors, it's got a ceiling, it's got some stairs, it's got a couple of doorways, and at least one window. So how do we go about doing this? What is it that Second Life needs from us? Well, it needs a couple of things. The first one is it needs to know what can you walk on. This surface here, the landing, going up to the stairs, the floors within the buildings, You've got a little back area here with a porch, a staircase that actually doesn't look like it goes down all the way, but hey, I didn't make it. You've got a doorway here, you've got a window here, you've got another doorway here, and you need to be able to either walk on a surface or not walk through a surface. Those are your two things that you can do. So we want to be able to obviously walk on the floors, walk up the stairs, walk through the doors, and walk on the floors here in the building. As far as the window, it depends on what you want to do. If it's just going to be a window that you're going to look out of, SL doesn't care. You could cover this up uh, when you make your physics and just make it solid so that you, co you don't pass through it. But some buildings, for instance, in role-playing, require that uh, people shoot at each other or go through a window. In that case, you need a physical area, a physical hole, in which you can do this. So in those instances, you would actually create the physics that surround the window. So if you look here, I've got a building with various colors on it and I've got the colors here in the materials. The red is the model. Now originally the whole thing was red. Then I went in and I said what are the walkable collision surfaces and I made those a turquoise. So as I go through my model I selected all the surfaces for the floors and for the steps and those became the surfaces that I walk on and I assigned a color to them so that I could see where they were. The yellow are the non-passable surfaces. These are areas that you don't want people to walk through. The stilts down below the, the uh, house. Now, if you didn't care if they walked through them, you didn't have to, but uh, I wanted at least one surface on the columns. There's also some on the uh, other areas that hold up the house. And there are all the walls within the building. The next area I did in a kind of purple red. And that I did as a special because there are surfaces that you decide if you want them as a phys physical surface or uh, do them in a different way and that was when I was talking about the window. I have the window here and I have the roof. Now normally you don't walk on the roof but if you think that your customers will walk on their roofs you may want to make that physical. So I've designated which are those those surfaces and uh, I then I have the window. If you're going to do the window uh, open then you need to do the surrounding area around the window. So we'll talk about that when we actually make the physical surfaces on this. The other thing that we need to do, which is incredibly important, because it will determine whether or not your physics shape works in Second Life, that is the bounding box. The bounding box is the height, the width, and the depth of your model. So if I 
come here. I've got a box that I have made that is the same size as the model. So if I also select the model, you can see that I've got areas that protrude just a tiny bit on all the surfaces of this box. This is the extent of my model on all the different directions. The height, the width, and the depth. Now, wherever you see a color other than red touching this surface, you know that you have a collision surface that meets the bounding box. So in this case, we have purple on the top height of the box, but we only have red on the bottom. We have a yellow surface on one side of the depth, but only red on the back. We have only red on one side of the width, but we have yellow on the other. So what does that mean? That means that any place, any surface on this, where there isn't at least a collision surface that meets it, you need to provide at least one triangle on that particular place. So what I did was I took one face on this area that was all red, this one here, and this one on the bottom. And I gave that a uh, different material just so that I could see that that one, those faces are the ones that I'm using to describe the rest of the physics that was missing where collision surfaces don't touch the bounding box. So when I close that bounding box and I look at my model I now have, I now know that all the collision surfaces either touch the bounding box or I have a triangular face that is on the bounding box on those areas where I didn't have a collision surface touching it. Once I remove all the red, now I'm left with only the surfaces that have to do with either describing the collision surfaces or the bounding box. So we've got our walkable surfaces, the surfaces that we don't pass through, and the ceiling, a roof, and the window if we want to use those as physics. So now we've got all these triangles. Now we started with, when we look at the first model, and you look up here, uh, you can see that I had 508 triangles for this building, which is really low poly. But when I come to the physics mesh, I now have only 93 triangles. And that's important because the more triangles in your physics mesh, the higher your LI. So you want to keep this as simple as you can. If any of these um, pieces are composed of more than one set of triangles per face, you would want to simplify that. The other thing is if you look at these steps, we've got two triangles per each face that we've got visible. So rather than have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14 triangles, we can do something that will simplify this and still allow us to have a surface that we can walk on. It is not important with most steps if they are not really deep. Like if we're talking about a huge staircase with these very big steps where you would need to take a few steps to get to the next step, you would want to have that step surface. But if you've got a, just a plain step 
where the next step is going to take you on to the next step, then do a ramp. So how can we do this with our existing geometry and uh, keep everything going perfectly? I'm going to be in vertex mode and I'm selecting these two vertices right here and I'm going to raise them up to the height of the top step, not the floor, because the floor is its own surface, but the top step. I then go into side view and pull this over and meet that step. Now I've got a ramp and I can get rid of this step here all the way down to this one. And now I'm left with a very simplified mesh surface that allows me to walk up so it maintains the steps but I don't have all that geometry anymore. And I would do that on each of the steps. Now as far as doorways, you look at this and you go, well, you know, you've got this surface here and you've got this surface here, but you don't have anything at the top. Well, if I'm walking through the doorway, the only surfaces I want to make sure are there are the sides of the doors so that I'm not going to walk through those areas. I'm not going to be walking through the top area of the door. So it doesn't matter if it's there or not. That's the, that's the thing to remember with doorways is you don't have to do the entire doorway. You just need enough physical surface to allow you to walk through and not pass through the surrounding areas around the door. So now I would do the same thing with these stairs back here going down and these steps going down as well. So now here I have most of my surfaces. So in Mesh Studio for this ramp that I made all you would do is just take a, um, a box and create the ramp so that it follows the edge of the steps and you can uh, make invisible all the faces except the one for the top of the ramp. And that's all you're doing is on your prims is you are deleting all or making invisible rather all the faces that are not going to generate any mesh. So with this now you have let's go back to our original here's your building and here's your physics mesh and with this you can walk in you can walk through the doors you can make sure you don't walk through the walls and you've got your steps all set up so I've got it down to 83 triangles now and once I do the physics for the additional stairs it will come down even more and that ensures that your LI will be down and it also ensures that you have a perfect physics because without the triangles that I have here in green what SL will do is it would try to stretch your mesh to where those green triangles are and that would then stretch where the doorway is where the steps are and now you've got physics that don't seem to work and that takes care of your problem So I hope that this 
has helped you in some way. And if you have any comments or suggestions, please contact me.